to the next one because we're staying in Australia on this one. And I, I, I think that um, this one is a really interesting story uh, when it comes to Eddie Jones. Uh, because if you guys don't know, this week Eddie Jones is going back to Twickenham Stadium and going to be playing against his former team from literally 12 months ago. <laughs> Literally 12 months ago, maybe 14 months ago in England uh, and playing against Steve Boswick, the guy who took over for him after uh, in, in this Japan uh, test match, Japan, England test match. Now, uh, one of the things that make this really interesting was the fact that uh, Eddie Jones is very adamant about the fact that he truly believes that it was a better move to be able to move from Japan move from Australia to Japan because he truly does not believe that domestic rugby is sustainable in Australia. So if you guys don't know, uh, Eddie Jones, <laughs> I'm with you, Abel Rosa. You got, you got to love Eddie Jones. I know my, my, my Australian friend Jason absolutely loathes Eddie Jones. I know uh, a lot of people loathe him, but this dude is just good for the sound bites, man. This dude is a sound bite machine. You know, obviously, if you guys don't know the history, Eddie Jones has been a long time uh, coach. He played all over in Japan, Australian guy. He used to coach for the Australian a national team back in like the early 2000s, took him to the Rugby World Cup. They kind of did OK, uh, moved on to uh, Japan. I mean, he moved on to some professional teams, then went on to Japan where he used the ups he, he got japan to the point where they upset south africa first and sevens and then did it in 15s like absolutely gangbusters took this uh japan team in 2019 into japan rugby world cup and absolutely had them lighting up took them higher than japan play it should have ever played but it pushed japan legitimately into a premier uh the premier one what do we call it? D1 team, uh, tier one into a tier one team with that. He was able to maneuver that to a job in England where he went from, I believe, uh, the, I forgot the professional team, but then went to coach for England for the better part of like three, four, five years where, you know, I think he had a good start. And ended very unceremoniously. Uh, I think a lot of people felt like he wore out his stay. Uh, felt was under uh, under uh, uh, serving the England team and was trying to play with the roster too much, as opposed to really actually you know winning when it mattered most. Even though ironically he got England to the uh, second to finish second in the 2019 Rugby World Cup. I'm sorry. I said he was in Japan. 2016 Olympics and the 2015 Rugby World Cup is where he did damage with Japan. 2019, he lost to South Africa in the Rugby World Cup and came in second. Uh, and uh, where does visit? Subsequently from there, going into the 2023 season of the Rugby World Cup, he went to Australia <laughs> and tried to take back that over. Uh, absolutely flopped in the Rugby World Cup. If you guys don't remember, they didn't even make it out of pool play. Australia, uh, the selection was critiqued. The decision-making was critiqued. Everything was critiqued. Uh, not a great look for Eddie Jones off of that one. And then right after, midway through the Rugby World Cup, got interviewed even though he tried to deny it. And then subsequently moved up to Japan shortly after he was fired, quit from uh, Australia uh, to go and work in Japan. And for him, you know, he, he he felt like this was the issue because he was like, look, I love Japan. Obviously, he's part Japanese, part part Australian. Um, you know, he said he really loves being in Tokyo uh, and loves working with the Japanese people, which I think worked better for probably his style. From what I understand, he has a very uh, militaristic style of playing. And I think with Japan, not that they require militarism, but there is a greater level of discipline that is attached to the culture that makes it easier to coach people to do what they do as opposed to people might you know want to overstep their experience 
and uh, uh, saying not to say that they not do and you don't have it, but you know, you can be able to play around a little bit with that one. Um, but uh, to the point that he was making on this one, uh, he said that he feels obviously better and relaxed about being in Japan. Uh, but he specifically talked about it. And I'm trying to find it directly on the article. You can find it on Planet Rugby. Oh, and Sean, you are right. Eddie Jones is definitely always good for Eddie Jones is definitely good for theatrics all the time. Um, it is where is he? Where is he? Did they write it? Um, okay, so you said on the contradictions. Um, so when it came to Australia, he said so to help the national team. All right. We have to import those overseas players playing at a high level to increase the standard. But we still don't have enough players playing on the island itself. And one of the problems in the young professional league, simply put, we've built up a reservoir of stock of national qualified players, and that's the process right now. Uh, I'm sorry. This is what he was talking about for Japan. I'm um, sorry. That, that is not where I wanted to focus on. Um, it was... Uh, Where are we? Welcome to Extraordinary. Oh, my goodness. I, I am losing where, where we had it. Well, anyways, the point is he wanted to be able to see what was going on more uh, with Australia and feels basically that Japan has probably a higher ceiling than uh, what Australia did. And, I mean, that speaks volumes. Uh, again, it could be a little bitterness, could be a little petty, not like he's not known for that. But uh, I do like to see what he would do with a place like Japan where, again, he can have his hands more into it and they will back him more. Japan has the money. They have the professional league. They have a professional league that makes money or throws money away correctly. So you have the pieces. You just got to get the culture and you got to get the talent. And, and yo, that's, that's where it goes with it with an Eddie Jones-led team. Uh, we're going to see what they're going to end up doing because of the rug, for the Rugby World Cup, obviously, in 2027, um, and, and getting that team ready for that. Uh, like uh, the article said, is like there's only 53% of players that are Japanese that play for the Japan team, which is a tough one. But, you know, make it happen. Again, we've seen it happen before. Japan is in a position where they are making major impacts and they have the resources to do it. We'd love to be able to see it. And uh, it, people don't realize, like, especially in Tokyo, Japan is – Japan has a really deep rugby team. Shout out to my guys, Tokyo Gaijin, for always be allowing me to be a part of that. That's 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 where you, I learned heaviest, the, the impact of rugby in Tokyo. So uh, let me know what you guys think. I know it was a little bit of a – yeah, slaggy story, but uh, I, I think it's an interesting one, especially going into the England game. I really want to see what this team is going to be able to do against England. Uh, this is going to speak a lot of volumes for Bostwick. Uh, one, based off of what we saw from the Six Nations, a lot of potential, but again, not really being able to turn it over. And number two, what do we see from Japan, you know, in this Autumn Cup and really being able to get it? I think in the U.S., you guys are going to be able to watch this on Flow Rugby. I think everywhere else, you watch it on Stars or whatever your Star Plus equivalency is. Buckwheat is changing lives. My name is Gift Tabelu. I'm here with Health Enhanced Foods, and I want to tell you about one of my favorite products on our shelves, Buckwheat Baking Mix. Buckwheat is a seed that is incredibly nutrient and protein dense. But what makes it even more important that buckwheat baking mix is absolutely gluten free. A lot of times whenever people have buckwheat mixes, they actually even hold wheat inside of it. So you know it's not fully gluten. And if you're a person that is celiac or diabetic or you're just really trying to be health conscious, it's not something that you want to have to worry about. What makes our buckwheat baking mix even more important is that it is versatile. You can use it for pancakes, you can use it for waffles, you can use it for making loaves of bread, you can make it for cupcakes. But what helps even more is that it is allergen free, it is nut free, it is dairy free, that there is no additional additives in it. There's no leavening there so that if you want to be able to raise your bread, you can put in the baking powder yourself and get it fluffy. If you don't, you absolutely 
absolutely do not have to. You get the bread that you love without the cost to your health. You can absolutely find buckwheat baking mix at healthenhancedfoods.com. Absolutely check it out. Get your nostalgia back. Get back to eating and loving the way that you are and absolutely get back to the energy that you know that you can get without having to destroy yourself. I'm looking forward to seeing you get it. Let's go.